what do you know guys, Casey here, it's another Gall Darn Bead Roller video. Alright guys, so before you change the channel, aside from the reinforcements that are necessary with one of these uh, flat plate style bead rollers, I think this is probably the best modification that you can make to this thing. It's a feature that's already uh, common in all the more expensive bead rollers and it makes operating this thing so much easier. So check this out. All right, folks. So in the last episode, you guys saw the modifications to my bead roller. And uh, one of the things I geeked out on was my cool little Betty Page uh, bearing handle with the, uh, with the brass bushing to actuate the shafts. But here's the bummer about this. If I back this off, my little brass bushing falls out of the way. And my shaft just kind of sits here which is also lame. Uh, there's no spring to pull it back up. So I had this thought, ooh, preview. I had this thought to install a spring back here. Basically, I'm gonna drill through this plate and tap into the block and run a long bolt um, that, that screws into the plate, has a washer to lock it in place. And therefore, when you crank down on the handle, it compresses the spring and when you retract on the handle, the spring tension pulls the arm up and you can remove your panel from the bead roller. I'm also gonna make a little quarter turn handle uh, that replaces this bolt so that you can snug that up once you've set your height or your depth, I guess, more accurately. Yeah, I think that's gonna make this thing way more handy. So here's how I'm gonna do it. All right, guys, so first things first. The hole in this tab that was for the tensioner is not even with the uh, bearing block on the shaft. So I've filed down the edges of a washer because I've got some weld to contend with, um, but it's not centered on purpose. It has to be shifted this way. Um, so that when I drill through this plate, it'll made up with the center or as close as I can get to the center of this block. The block also has some play in it. Um, I've got it snug right now. Has some play in it side to side. So you want to roughly split the difference and then snug it in place and then drill your hole accordingly. Just a tip. So I purposely went through and touched the top of the block. So I have a mark in the block where I'm gonna drill and tap my hole for that. All right, so we've got our hole, our bolt fits through. Um, I'm gonna leave it at 5 16ths for now. When the shaft travels up, it does move in a slight arc. Um, the only thing that's gonna hold the bolt straight is spring pressure. So it remains to be seen uh, how much I need to open up this bottom hole. Might be fine at 5 16 might need to go slightly oversized um, just to allow for the slight arc that the shaft travels at. Now I need to pull the, uh, the top shaft, take it apart, pull the bearing block off of it, and uh, drill and tap my hole where my mark is. As you can see, there's my mark from the drill passing through. So that's where I will center my uh, drilled hole that I will tap out.
Aloha! This is a segment of my videos that I like to call What's Casey Drinking? And tonight I'm not drinking beer. What is this beautiful concoction? The garnish may give it away for some of you. This is a Mai Tai, the Trader Vic's 1944 recipe. Um, it is delicious. Now there is some debate as to who originated the Mai Tai. Um, some people say Don Beach, some people say Vic Bergeron. I like the, the Vic Bergeron of Trader Vic's fame. I like his story. I think he's probably more accurate. Plus the Don's Mai Tai is kind of, it's kind of weird. It's like the airport Mai Tai that you get or the hotel bar Mai Tai. This is the real deal. Two types of rum, a little bit of triple sec, orgeat, which is an almond syrup, and a little bit of a sweetener. You can do rock sugar, agave nectar, uh, cane sugar if you can find it. It is delicious. So, cheers. Mm. I'll put a link to the recipe. Rather, I'll put the recipe in the description of the video. Now I've got my bolt, which threads into the, the bearing block for the shaft, right? Also got a washer, Harden grade eight. Um, I actually started with a quarter inch washer and I opened it up to be a very snug fit on the 5 16 bolt. <clears throat> My spring is slightly oversized. So I've got a uh, bronze bushing to take up the slack. You don't need this level of uh, exact um, fit, but just how I like to try to do things. So, bolt, bushing, spring, got my special washer on the bottom. You gotta start the nut. Kind of preload it a little bit. Um, you don't wanna go crazy, but it's gotta be started. And then, Then you get a lock washer in place, slide the bearing block up. Now it's very easy to cross thread. So you gotta really kind of feel it. And we're going together. So once you get your bolt started, And you can back the nut off. The idea being that we're gonna ultimately lock the nut with the lock washer against the bearing block so that the bolt then becomes just kind of free in space in this bracket and can move up and down. As we approach the end of the threads on this nut, however, we're gonna need to put our um, preload arm in place. All right, so we start this guy on its way down. Okay. I do have just enough room. Nice. All right. So now we're gonna
This is pretty trick because I can crank down on the bearing block and raise and lower the shaft. Hopefully that's videoing okay. I still have a little bit of interference between my bolt and the arm. I can take care of that though. So that's nice and handy, but I still have to get a wrench to tighten the bolt on the bearing block unless I do something there as well. Just a dab will do ya. Picked these little ratcheting handles up at the local salvage yard. Just spin in place and snug down. And there you have it. We have a bolt to lock that upper lock into place and the handle ratchets. Just like that. So it's always in the right spot. All right. So that is it. A little bit of a packaging nightmare to do it this way, but I couldn't really find a better place to put a spring on this frame. So anyway, um, this is obviously unloaded, right? It goes up a little teeny bit higher. Um, but so now, before, you had to get a wrench to tighten this bolt and you had to get a wrench to tighten this bolt. And you know, it was just two wrenches to grab. And then you had to like lift up on the shaft to slide your piece in. And then you had to, you know, maneuver it all to get everything tightened up. Now, you back your, your quarter turn fastener off, you load your piece, you crank your handle down, you count the number of turns, throw your quarter turn, and you're good to go. Um, and then when you're ready to pull your panel out and switch it, you back a quarter turn off, back your handle off, pull your panel out, reset it, throw your quarter turn again, and Bob's your uncle. Um, I think this is probably the, the single best modification you can do to one of these sheet metal frame bead rollers besides the, the physical reinforcement of it. Um, that was uh, when I was trying to do my first test panel, this was driving me absolutely insane. Um, yeah, anyway, now, now I have no excuses. Time to get back to work on another panel. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, um, thank you so much for watching this week. I hope you found this informative. Um, please hit that like button if you like what you saw in today's video. Comment to let me know what you thought. Uh, or what you want to see more of in future videos. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell because that lets you know if I post new videos. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you next week. All right, bye. Microphone check, one, two, three, four, microphone, microphone, microphone. Aloha. 
Aloha. This is a segment of my videos that I like to call